right, so this is a returning customer's van. It used to have a small system built with Enerdrive components in it. So it had a 200 amp hour BTEC generation one. It also had DC DC charger doing vehicle charging and solar, and it had a 240 volt charger plus a 2600 watt inverter, which was wired through the van for use off grid. So the customer was having some problems with their setup. <laughs> Um, it wasn't recharging as they thought it should do. It wasn't able to get the most out of the system, particularly when they were using their inverter. So they actually bought this van like this, built like this. So they contacted us once they built, bought the van and, and had a bit of a chat about what they were going to do and how they were going to set it up and um, what we've ended up doing for them is partially utilizing what was there underneath the bed. I've rehashed quite a bit of that though, including how the DC-DC charger was wired. Now, basically when I've taken apart this van to start installing the new system that's going in here, I have found immediately an installation issue that could potentially cause a fire. So what the previous installer has done has taken the output side of the DC-DC charger. Uh, now we're not using the DC-DC charger as solar regulator for roof mounted solar. We've actually got it doing DC-DC charging only and giving them the abil ability to plug in portables. We've also now got 1200 watts of solar on the roof. Previously had just under 600 uh, watts of solar. Um, so we've now got 1200 on the roof, uh, which is um, six 200 watt panels. We've replaced the generation one BTEC battery with a 620 amp hour LifeTech battery, which has tripled their capacity. Uh, and obviously just redone, you know, everything under here to make it compliant. So fusing for solar, isolation for solar, um, full battery isolation and full battery monitoring as per the standard. Um, on top of that, with the monitoring package, we've actually installed a Cymarine monitoring package for them. Um, so the inverter controller was previously mounted in this location. So we've actually um, added to that by installing Cymarine. So basically Cymarine now is looking after the battery monitoring functionality. We're also monitoring the loads and how much solar is coming down and also they can monitor the car and the portable solar when, when they're plugged in to either one of those two things through the DC-DC charger. So the system now operates, I won't say it's different to how it used to operate, it just gives them more functionality, more usable capacity in their system. As I say, we didn't modify any of the 240 volt in here. We just tested it, made sure it was safe, and then recabled the inverter on the DC side, added a bigger battery, essentially. So now they can use their air conditioner for long periods of time off grid because the system is able to do that. They can run their fridge if they want to on 240. It is a three-way fridge. But the main things they were looking to do were to run kitchen appliance for extended periods of time, air conditioner for extended periods of time, uh, and all those sorts of things. So yeah, this, this system now is significantly different to what was installed in terms of how the design of the system comes together, uh, which gives them a lot more usable capacity. All right, so this van now has 1200 watts of solar, a 2600 watt inverter, a 620 amp hour battery, two solar regulators for the two, for the 1200 watts of solar, um, and they can also plug portables into this van. Anyway, quick and short. Cheers guys, we'll see you in the next one.